nobody's on with us, which is weird. Oh, there it goes. I think there's just a lag. This is longer. Morning, everybody. Now we got some people on. Hopefully, you can see us and hear us. Look like we might have been having some technical difficulties on this rainy Monday, which would be sad because then you would miss all the cuteness that is our friend here. Looks like we have people hopping on now, which is excellent. My name is Carrie. I'm the curator of education here at Buttonwood Park Zoo. We're coming to you live from um, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Hi, Tegan. Hi, Hannah and Mackenzie, some of our favorite friends who are joining us every day and even for virtual zoo crew. Um, I am going to be turning it over to one of our educators, Miss Sarah, who's going to be introducing us to one of our animal ambassadors here. So, Sarah, I'm going to let you take it away. Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. And here we have one of my very best friends. This is Rhett. And Rhett is a Virginia opossum. Somebody was going to keep turning him around. Can't quite decide where to face, but lucky for us, I have some of his very favorite treats, so I should be able to keep him pretty tempted to pay attention for at least a while until we run out of food. So opossums are one of the most widely misunderstood and underappreciated animals in the world as far as I'm concerned. They have a bunch of different records to their names. They're hugely important to our ecosystem and even to our own personal health. And they're just all around adorable as far as I'm concerned. I think Rhett looks like a little stuffed animal. And when we open up, you know, we have a stuffed animal in the gift shop that looks literally exactly like them. I could mix them up. I, I'm trying, man. I'm working on it. <laughs> so as I said, they have a number of records. Let's talk about a few of them. First of all, they are North America's only marsupial, which means they're the only mammal living on our continent where the female carries her babies in a pouch. So that's the first record that they have. The second is pretty similar because when the mother is pregnant, she's only pregnant for 12 days, which is the shortest gestation period of any mammal as well. So after that, those babies are gonna come out about the size of a grain of rice. She can have up to 25, and to give you an idea of what that would look like, all 25 of those babies would be able to fit in a teaspoon together. So they'll crawl up, they'll fit inside her pouch, and they'll stay there for a few months as they get bigger. Um, and that's just like a really cool thing that they can do. They carry them around on their backs after that, but they have the shortest gestation period, the shortest pregnancy of any mammal. They also have the most teeth of any North, can you give that back please, sir? <laughs> <laughs> they have the most teeth of any North American mammal. They have 50 teeth, which is crazy considering humans have only a little more than half that. So that's a pretty awesome thing that they've got as well. Luckily, they're not super aggressive animals, and one of the number one things we'll use those teeth to eat, besides basically everything in the world, except for citrus fruit, which is a little too strong, the number one thing they like to eat is ticks. So they will actually eat about 5,000 ticks a year, which helps us from getting nasty tick-borne illnesses like Lyme disease, and it also is just a really way, good way for them to get rid of pests in general. So what's also neat about that means that basically opossums are kind of immune to Lyme disease, they're also basically immune to rabies because their blood temperature is so low. They're also immune to most poisons and venoms, which makes them really valuable to doctors trying to cure snake bites and things like that. Hi, camera's over here, come on, show everyone your cute little face. <laughs> so they've just got an incredible amount of different things that make them absolutely amazing. They're one of our only animals in North America that has a prehensile tail, which we'll get to a little bit later, meaning they can grab onto things. Basically, just everything about them is awesome. So before you continue, we have some questions in the audience, starting with what it is you're feeding him. Excellent. So this is his diet for today. You can see a variety of fruits. Not for you. Come on. <laughs> variety of fruits and vegetables. I've given him some extra grapes today because those are his very, very favorite. But we've got things like pears, apples, cantaloupe, carrots, sweet potato, cucumber. We've got a couple green peppers in there. We also have this lovely kibble which is good for him, just like it's good for your dogs or cats. And we have a quarter of a hard-boiled egg, which we're gonna get to later on when we need to bring out the, the big stuff. Um, but for right now, his favorite treat is gonna be these grapes. So I'm gonna keep giving him these cute little grapes. And so in the wild, they would be an omnivore then? Yeah, they're actually called an opportunistic omnivore, which means they'll basically eat literally anything. They can hunt for food, they can scavenge for things like eggs, they'll eat dead animals or carrion. 
Oh, see those little hands. hands really well there. So they'll go in the water and catch fish. They can try and catch birds. They're actually pretty fast. They can run up to about four miles per hour, which doesn't seem like much, but it's still pretty good for hunting. They will go through your trash, unfortunately, so you want to keep lids on those bad boys so that they don't get in there and cause too much of a mess. They'll eat fruits, they'll eat vegetables, they'll eat leaves, they'll eat bugs. I mean, literally, they'll eat anything but citrus fruit. Some of them have personal favorites and personal dislikes, just like people, but if it comes down to it and they're really hungry, anything will do, basically. All right, my friend Kaiden is wondering what the difference between an opossum and a possum from Australia is. I love that question so much. So in North America, Central America, and South America, there are tons, there are over 60 different species of opossums, which all kind of look similar to this. Um, and they are in a group called Oh gosh, I'm gonna say it wrong. I shouldn't have started like that. Uh, Didelphia Day. Um, so it just talks about their reproductive systems and that they're these North American marsupials and South and Central American marsupials. In Australia, there is, and I hate to say this in front of Rhett, by all accounts, a slightly cuter animal called a possum, which is also a marsupial, but has a different reproductive system and lives its life a little bit differently. Um, so they're pretty closely related, more so than some other mammals. Um, but not as closely related as opossums are to other opossums. Oh, dropped a grape. He's going to get it. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and before we get too much further into the questions, maybe you could tell Rhett's story, how we ended up here at the zoo. I would love to do that. So Rhett came to us in kind of a sad way, but with a very happy ending. So he and his sister Scarlett are both here, and our best guess is that they were born in the wild in February 2018. And when they were riding around on their mother's backs, unfortunately, a family dog found them. And he was able to separate Rhett and Scarlett from their mother and siblings. Luckily, that wonderful Good Samaritan was able to rescue them from his dog. And <laughs> some projectile carrots there, huh? And brought him in. So we have got these two wonderful rescued opossums. Unfortunately, they do rely pretty heavily on their mothers uh, for those first few months. So they were not quite old enough to survive on their own and they had some minor injuries that we were able to heal up so that now they're in perfectly great shape. In fact, these guys are approaching two and a half years old, which is about as old as you could possibly hope for a wild opossum. We have gotten very lucky in the past. Captive opossums can sometimes live up to four years old. So that's of course what we're hoping for these guys as well. Um, but opossums have very short lifespans. So we're very, very happy that we were able to rescue these guys and bring them here where they lead very spoiled opossum lives, if I dare say. Great. Samantha, age seven, would like to know what their conservation status is. That is a wonderfully scientific question. I adore it. They are least concerned. Um, they're actually one of the few animals that is doing well as their habitats are replaced with human environments. Not something that humans tend to love, um, but it's enabling opossums, which actually started off millions of years ago in South America, um, to come up north. And every year they're getting a little bit more and more north not a place they'd be able to survive in the wild because it's so cold and their little ears and tails can get hypothermia and frostbite. Um, but what ends up happening is as people build these homes that they can kind of make dens underneath, it allows them to move to places where it would normally be too cold for them to survive. So they're least concerned and they're actually, they're doing pretty great. John, I want to thank you so much for your donation today. Your support really helps us during this time of closure when we can't bring in revenue um, to help with our conservation education miss mission. So we really appreciate that. That helps us keep our virtual keeper chats coming to you. Um, Tegan, you are absolutely right. They are an extreme mom, which you learned about last week yes. during Virtual Zoo Crew. Um, just a plug those program, that program and the activities are still on our website, so you're welcome to go keep participating if you missed out last week. Yeah, and one of the things that made them such an extreme mom, aside from that really short pregnancy period, is, oh, that was lovely, thank you, bud, um, is that they're going to have that strange process where they're born after 12 days and then live in a pouch, the only North American mammals to do so, where they'll stay for a few months. It's kind of a tough process of elimination. Up to 25 of those rice-sized babies can be born. There's only enough milk in her pouch for up to 13, sometimes not even as much. And then even if 13 babies make it from her pouch out onto her back, there's a less than 50% survival rate. So most opossums will never live through their first day. Then the others won't necessarily live through the first couple months. And a lot won't live through the first year. But sometimes you get these really strong survivors. And even for them, the maximum lifespan <laughs> in the wild is usually two. 
Um, Cindy wants to know why he's not climbing out of the basket. Uh, well, it's a combination of, I'd like to say, super well behaved. Uh, it could also be laziness. Food is being brought literally to his mouth. Um, <laughs> his eyesight is much better at night, but even then, not super great. They really only have a, a decent ability to do light and dark. Um, so I wouldn't want to risk him falling or anything like that. And if he gets on the ground, like I said, he can run up to four miles an hour and he's great at finding warm little spots. So if he were to leave this basket, um, the adventure would begin as far as us having to chase him. I am going to try and get him out a little bit later, show off some of his other features. But for right now, it's just a nice cute way for him to stay still so you can admire all of his wonderful traits. Logan, age eight, would like to know what their predators are. That is an excellent question as well. Unfortunately for opossums, clean himself. They, uh, they basically can be eaten by anything bigger than them, starting with raccoons even when they're young. Then it turns into more things like birds of prey, big snakes, coyotes, wolves, even pet dogs or things like that. So they really have an awful lot of predators. They have a few defenses. Like I said, they have those 50 teeth so they can bite although they usually try to stay further away. So they'll maybe run, they'll open their mouth really wide. They have a pretty scary growl that they can do to sound intimidating. And the very famous one, if they get super, super scared, is to play dead. People even call it playing opossum. This is not something they choose to do though. If they get so, so, so scared, they think they're about to die. It's basically like fainting. Their entire body will freeze up and they'll look and even maybe start to smell dead. And some animals don't want to eat dead things, so that's a decent defense. Those animals will sometimes walk away and leave them alone. The problem is that state, because they're not choosing to do it, can last anywhere from a few minutes to up to six hours. So if they get really, really scared of, let's say, a car, having your entire body shut down for six hours in a road is not a great thing to have happen. So it's a good defense against predator animals, not a great defense against a lot of the things that humans have added to the world that can pose a threat. And one of the things we, we tell people, a really great way to help an opossum is, and really all our wildlife here in, in North America, is to not throw things out your car window. I know a lot of people think, well, I'm not littering if I throw a banana peel or a piece of gum out the window, but those smelly, yummy things do attract a lot of our friends out to the road. Um, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So Absolutely. that's one way you can definitely help them. Like I said, their eyesight's not super great. They are nocturnal, so they're mostly out at night. Rhett obviously is out because he's getting fed right now and getting lots of attention, so he'll wake up for that. But that sense of smell and the sense of uh, hearing and even these whiskers up here, those are all really good senses. And unfortunately, their number one purpose is to find food. So if you're throwing edible things out of your car really close to the side of the road, that's gonna bring them right way too close to traffic. And it's really just a sad thing. So we're gonna try our best to keep things nice and clean. If you wanna get your, your um, compostable things somewhere where nature can benefit, that's awesome. Try not to do it too close to a road though, please. Beth, thank you so much for your donation. Um, Kayla is wondering where Scarlett is. Oh, that is a great question, too. Scarlett is still here. I'm going to bet you a million dollars she's asleep, uh, as <laughs> is what they usually do this time of day, although she does have some food, so she'll probably get in a munch then whenever she gets a smell of it. Um, but Scarlett and Rhett, like I said, they are brother and sister. Even though they're brother and sister, though, that doesn't mean they're best friends. Opossums are basically entirely solitary. They'll come together to mate, and that is it. They don't really like being around one another. So Rhett and Scarlett did grow up together, but once they hit that age when opossums start going off on their own, um, they really don't enjoy being together. So they are in separate enclosures. We'll sometimes bring them out near one another, but since we're getting such a close look today, this would be way too close to have them next to one another. They would not enjoy being that close to another adult opossum. All right, and Diana and Sheila, you are correct. It's super awesome to have as many opossums around because they do eat lots of ticks. Yes. Sarah did talk about that a little bit. Ticks, Dre, pests, thank you so much for your donation. Um, Trinity Heaven, age seven, would like to know what color their eyes are. Ooh, let's see if we get a nice close look. Oop, he moves a lot. Now again, these are nocturnal animals, so they're gonna have those really sensitive pupils, and those are just gonna show up as black. Um, so it can be kind of tough. They do have some little nuances to the color, but mostly what you're gonna see are those kind of beady black eyes. Um, Peyton wants to know, does he like to eat bananas because she loves bananas? Yes. He or oh, she loves he bananas. He loves bananas. The only reason I didn't bring a banana, and I know this is kind of silly, he makes such a mess when he eats bananas that I thought it might be a little yucky for you guys to watch. 
because um, since they're so gooey, it involves a lot of chewing and then kind of spitting out a little bit and then chewing it again and it's it's not a pretty sight. But if it makes you happy, I'll give them a banana later just for you. Charlotte, age five, wishes she could pet an opossum. Maybe you could talk a little bit about their hair. I would love to talk about their hair because it's really, it actually is, um, it's kind of wiry, but it's a lot softer than people would think. I got egg yolk on your hair, bud, I'm sorry. Um, sure, he doesn't mind, he'll clean himself off. But so you can see it's got this kind of wiry look. So if you can imagine a cat that's maybe not super, super soft, um, it has kind of that brush-like feel. That's what it feels like, but they are softer than a lot of people think, and they're meticulous groomers. They spend a lot of time cleaning themselves, which is one of the reasons that they end up eating 96% of the ticks that get on them. That's why they almost never have Lyme disease. They groom themselves constantly. One of the only differences between males and females is actually their scent glands. Males have a really big scent gland on their belly, and females have one during um, mating and when they have their babies. And it helps them to communicate. The males um, release that sense so that females can find them and so they can kind of say who's around and who they're competing with. And the females do it so that the babies can find her pouch better. Um, but they do end up grooming that scent gland to try and spread that scent around. So they're basically constantly bathing themselves. So they are quite soft, even if it's because of their own saliva. So I'm going to touch them anyway. <laughs> uh, Hannah, age eight, wants to know why their lifespan is so short. I wish I had a good answer. It is very sad. They have so much personality. It's a shame that they don't live very long. However, they are adapted to get the most out of that very short lifespan. So like I said, after growing up in their mother's pouch for a few months, they'll go on her back for a few more. And by six months, they are on their own. They're looking to reproduce. So even in their very first year, they're already considered adults. They'll go on through that rest of the season. They'll slow down a little bit during the winter. They don't hibernate, but they don't do as much. They'll come out in the spring. And he's sleeping. Doing, bud? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Um, so they'll come out in the spring, so they really do live that life to the fullest, but unfortunately because they're so delicious to so many animals, um, they kind of have to go quickly because they're just too delicious. Um, Cindy wants to know if they bite. Well, that's a great question. Would Rhett bite me right now? I mean, you've seen that I can kind of pet him, so no, he's not going to bite. They do have a pretty calm disposition. That said, if you startle them, uh, they absolutely can, and again, remember, they hold the record for the most teeth. You really do not want cantaloupe today. The most teeth of any North American mammal with 50 teeth. And so if they did bite, that would ruin your day. Yeah, so uh, they can. Um, Rhett will probably not, just because right now I'm just giving him love and food. So that would be a, a sore payback, but <laughs> they could. They usually, and in the wild, they're really not going to let you get that close to them not at um, to bite. Uh, Kaiden would like to know how much he weighs. He weighs about 10 pounds. Now in the wild you wouldn't expect him to get quite this heavy, although they have been seen to get up to like 14 or so pounds. That's a really chunky one though. Um, they do tend to be a little bit heavier in the northern parts of their range. They'll be a little bit smaller in the southern parts where they don't need that insulation quite as much in the cold season. And these guys can be found all the way down into Central America. So you'll see smaller ones in there. Females also tend to be a teensy bit smaller. Um, but around here, Eight to ten pounds is a is a big healthy adult. <laughs> PJ, that's a great question. Age five wants to know where we can see him at the zoo. I love that question. Unfortunately, he is an animal. Well, fortunately, he's an animal ambassador, which makes my life really awesome. Um, but because of that, he's not out on permanent display. You can see him if you come to events or if you time your visit with one of our animal ambassador uh, talks, where we bring them out. So he is off exhibit during the day, but we bring him out for parties, for zoo crew, for school, field trips, all sorts of things like that. And sometimes just for fun, just so people can meet him. But he's not in an enclosure that you can just see any day when you come to visit. And you can see him doing a really good job right now of grooming himself. I bet a lot of you might be surprised to know that opossums are pretty clean animals. They're super clean. Uh... Those are actually litter box trained even, so which didn't take much training. They're just very neat. If you've Ooh. ever had rodent pets, you'll notice they tend to do the same thing. Diana had a great question. Are they smelly? Uh, yes and no. So you might think that they're a little smellier than they are just because a lot of people have this very sad opinion of them as being kind of like garbage animals, and so they think of them as smelling like trash or like garbage. So they don't smell like that at all. I would say he has kind of a neutral smell right now, 
But when it gets into mating season, like I said, the males have those big scent glands on their chest and those will let off a pretty musky odor that's pretty strong so that they can communicate without getting right next to one another so they don't have to fight. And the females will let off a similar but slightly different scent when she's had babies and that will attract the babies up to her pouch. So they can definitely be smelly in their own respects. But in terms of just like right now, is he smelly to me? No, I think he smells quite good. So actually. I think we are we are at the end of our questions, but also Rhett is starting to get sleepy, it looks like. Maybe we could try and bring him out yeah. so we can see the rest of his body. And while you're doing that, I can show everyone some people were asking about their food. Um, so these guys are opportunistic <laughs> omnivores, okay. which omnivores. means they'll eat just about anything. Right now he's getting a mix of... Um, kibble and all kinds of yummy eggs and fruits. Right now he's really into his grapes. Show off his tail. All right. He's got this awesome prehensile tail that can wrap lighting. around my finger. And it's actually gonna help him get balance when he's climbing around trees. He's a little too heavy to hang from it, but it is gonna help give him a lot of balance and he can actually pack things into that tail, like leaves or sticks or things that he might use uh, to make himself a nice warm den. Um, of course, we had our favorite question, does he have a favorite keeper? I would love to say me. Um, I think, again, as with all of them, he has gotten attached. What are you doing, bud? <laughs> He's gotten nothing. attached to, um, I think, all of us here in quick. Animal Ambassadors. Um, so all his friends who come and take care of him and give him lots of treats. Whether or not that's just because we feed him, who knows? But I think of him as a good friend, so I'd like to think that he thinks of me as a good friend, too. And they do have those four <laughs> opposable thumbs, one on each foot. It is ticklish. Someone was commenting on his whiskers, which were just tickling Miss Sarah. Yes, they're awesome whiskers. They help him get a good sense of what he can and can't fit into. Just like a cat. He's just all over my head yeah. right now. All right, well, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us today yes, for you. our Keeper Chat. Um, with ahead. Rhett and Sarah, our animal ambassador and educator. We love visiting with you guys every day at 11. We'll see you again tomorrow for another edition. We hope that you have a new appreciation. If you didn't already come at this loving opossums, we hope that you do now because we certainly do oh, yes, we love do. them here. Thank you so much. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you again to those of you who made a donation to the Zoological Society. <laughs> we really appreciate your support. Thank you.